This is going to be a lesson on, okay, so this is going to be a video on Catfish Blues, Skip James' version. The tuning for the song is standard tuning, but all the strings are tuned down one step, so E flat, A flat, B flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. And then you can get to a tuning that's close to what he's got on the recording. I'm just going to go through it once, at least just a watered down version of it, and then I'll get into what he plays after that. So, just starting off with the intro, it comes up to the 12th fret, and you've got the 12th fret of the 3rd string, open 2nd, and 12th fret of the top string. So then, I just kind of use my right hand thumb pointer middle, and kind of roll through. Um, but it starts out with that 12th fret on the top string, and you hammer into the 15th fret. And then he goes... So hammer in, and then release that 15th fret, and then go... Roll through. Then, you can pinch all three strings, go up one fret. Or maybe just the first and third strings. And then go up one more fret. And then another fret. And then go up another. So this will be at the 16th fret now. And then you can roll down first, second, third string. First, second, third, first. And then he actually hits them open. And then come down two frets. And then he hits them open again. So that's so far, that's hammer on, roll. And then at the 16th fret, Okay, then he does this. Ah. So it's the same thing, hammer into the 15th fret, roll through, first, third string, second string, third string, and then on the second string now you bend the 13th fret. Then it'll go 12th, 14th, 12th on the first string. 12th, 14th, 12th. And he just does that again. And then this bend on the 13th fret, just a slight bend. So altogether that intro is... Then he plays a few double stops, 
11th fret of the top string, 12th fret of the second string. Then move that shape down a whole step per string, aka you don't change the shape. And then another whole step. Like that. This is actually from the melodic minor scale. It's got a really kind of sinister sound. Because you've got the major 7, but also the minor. So that is the intro. And then he just comes down here. So all that is, is getting into the core shape, because this whole song is an E. So the core kind of shape is going to be 2nd fret of the 4th string, 1st fret of the 3rd string. And so... Really all that he's doing in spots like this, I think, at least one way to think about it for like a simpler way, is you've just got the alternating bass on the 6th and 4th strings. And then on the treble side, one thing that Skip James does quite a bit is he hammers into that 1st fret of the 3rd string. Sometimes he'll just kind of riff on that, just the hammer on. So I'd almost get used to just getting that thumpy sort of thing where you've got the sixth string, and then on the th on the fourth string, on the alternating bass, you're kind of just strumming through it a bit. And then you're kind of catching that third string. And then you can practice the hammer on. And then you can actually practice it as a pull off because that sounds kind of like something that he does, kind of like pulling off into the minor note. Because here's the major, and here's the minor. So you can. Kind of change that vamp up a little bit by doing a pull off instead. So these are just a few ideas when it comes to the permutations because it's nice to sort of go through the different permutations to make it a little bit different each time you play. So there's one with a hammer on, it can be a hammer on or a pull off. And then another thing he does, particularly at the end or the beginnings of the choruses, I think I kind of noticed, or actually just all throughout as well, but he sometimes doesn't even play the second fret of the fourth string. Instead he plays it open. And that creates that dominant sound, because this is a dominant seventh. open fourth string and using the third string as a pull off or as a hammer on. But now getting, that's a little bit of a tangent, but getting back to this riff. Really, you can just kind of think of this as sort of a moment where he's just kind of fiddling around in a sort of out of time way with the bass strings on the 6th and 4th frets, or 6th and 4th strings. And then on the treble side he does this thing that he really likes to do, which is this hammer on into the 3rd string. And then open 2nd string, open 1st string. So I'd also get used to this lick, 
because it comes up a lot, where you hit the bottom string, hit the third string open, and then hammer into the first fret of the third string. twister, but you, as you hammer in, you then hit the bass note on the fourth string, that alternating bass. See that? So they kind of coincide, and your fingers might feel tempted to since you hear that note in your head, you might feel tempted to pick it as well. Or something like that, but remember that's just a hammer on. Just li lining those up. Now, here's the next step. After you line those up, hit the second string open. you can hit the top string and bottom string at the same time. And you've got that kind of lick. And then, in this moment, all he's really doing is, again, taking that alternating bass, using this lick, and he just sort of fiddles around within the alternating bass and that lick. So, meaning he'll just kind of fiddle around and play some of those alternating bass notes and then sort of play that one lick in a couple different ways, like... Like, it's just kind of broken. So that's the entire intro. while he sings kind of starts with this kind of vamp that was spoken about earlier. Where he's got the second fret of the fourth string, first fret of the third string, and then bottom string open so you've got the alternating bass. And then you've got that third string that you kind of hit into through the alternating You can vary it, you can just play the, you can leave out the second fret of the fourth string. Or you can pull off instead. Or go back and forth. So a lot of options and almost that sort of kind of messiness I feel like kind of adds to the Skip James style. And then, there's another note you can add, 3rd fret of the 2nd string. And remember how you were able to play the 4th string open? This 3rd fret is just the octave. Sometimes he'll play this. second and third string. But that's kind of the fancier way of using this chord. Just play the simpler versions, like just the band. Add in this note. Or you can use that, uh, this thing. Where you 
got the lick, and then he'll kind of echo it. So you got some options, but that's just what he does on the one chord. play this bass line, this kind of transition bass line. Open fifth string, hammer into the second fret, and then he's got this chord. Second fret of the bottom string, second fret of the fifth string, first fret of the fourth string, second fret of the third string. kind of a special case where you'll go hammer into that second fret of the fifth string. And then he'll immediately fret the chord. And then hit the fourth string, bottom string, and then kind of strum up on this on the chord from the second or third string. And then he'll immediately go back to the one chord and play his favorite lick. Well, not his favorite lick, but just this lick that comes up a lot. A little hammer on and then a bit of an echo. So that's kind of how it starts. One chord, and you got this. Uh, start that again. Okay. And remember, a couple ways to play the one chord. transition again. Uh, except now he won't get into this 5 chord. He'll just play the hammer on. 4th string open. Hammer on to the 2nd fret of the 5th string. Open 4th string. Open bottom string now. And then he gets into this. from the intro. So 12th fret of the top string, open 2nd string, 3rd fret, or sorry, 12th fret of the 3rd string. So the picking pattern here, bottom string open, pinch 1st and 3rd strings, string open, and then pinch the top and bottom strings, and then you just repeat that. So bottom string open, pinch, first and third string, second string open, pinch top and bottom, pinch first and third, open second, pinch first and sixth. Pardon me, first chord. And it's, I don't know how exactly what number of times he plays that. It's kind of easier to think about it based on what the lyrics are doing, I think. When he's done, he slides down to the third fret of the second string, 
I kind of fret it early and slide down. You pick it while it's still high. It doesn't really matter where you start it. And then you land into that third fret of the second string and then play it with the top string open. second fret of the second string and then second fret of the third string and I kind of pinch that by sweeping up with the, on the first string and then from here what I kind of do is pull off second string. So the second string kind of leads in. Like that. So all together. Same transition, like fifth string open, second fret, fourth string. Sorry, I'm snapping them so much. And then sixth string open. Then you've got this lick. It's on the eighth fret of the second string. Kind of bend it up and the seventh fret of the top string. So then you've got an alternating bass on the sixth and fourth to go along with that. And all you're really doing is playing around there. Ninth fret of the top string. Just get used to just just playing around up here. Same, similar kind of slide move, grabbing the top two strings, and on the second string you slide down into the second fret. Pulling off, and then landing into that E chord. Into that. 
that thing, but back to this. First you kind of consolidate down here after playing this. You kind of like find your footing. Just last a couple beats. Which is one about one bar. So that was the kind of consolidation, you sort of land there, last there for a few bars, one, or one bar. Now, I would kind of think of this section as divided into two different sort of moves that you, that you work around, which is, one is this, it's just that same lick actually. And then, what, this is the second move now. alternating bass rather than, well I'll just say it's an alternating bass between the 6th and 4th strings. You got that dominant 7th. Not again. And then you've got the 3rd fret of the top string, which you can sweep with the strings below. And then you move back to that initial shape. pickups rather than just this and of course you're limited since it's finger style but you can kind of dress it up a little bit by doing these pickup notes rather than just this you can do pickups sometimes I think 
think helps it fill in the rhythm a little bit, so it's a little bit easier or better defined. So. Five chord, it's the same five chord. Second fret of the bottom string, second fret of the four, fifth string, first fret of the fourth string, second fret of the fifth, third string, second string open. And on the bass side, what he does, I believe, is he goes 5th string, 4th string, 6th string, 4th string. And again, on the melody side, you can really just keep it very simple. Second string. Right? And then you can kind of dress that up by doing those pickups. of just starting with a very basic kind of thing and then sort of dressing it up here and there is sort of like a nice fractal way of thinking about it because you can just sort of have one simple thing and just sort of add these little permutations to it. But you can think about it however it works best. but you don't have to. The one thing I was going to mention is that you can add, that you can add is, is this bass note. Hammer it. 
this song because after that he just gets back into that van. So you've got a few different things you can play there. You've got this. You got this. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.